We're at the Delray Beach Art Festival, and we're going to step in and interview. Hello, how are you? What's your name? Dan. Okay, and you're the artist. I am the artist. Okay. Tell us a little about your art. Well, a little bit about my art. My art is done in soft pastel, okay, and uh, all my pieces here are original pieces of artwork. Uh, I live in Miami. And I do mostly, I'm influenced by what's around me. So I do a lot of uh, urban scenes as well as tropical scenes. Why don't you give us uh, a little sample? Okay. Uh, well, uh, the first one, uh, first set, these are some of my cloud series, uh, cloud scenes from, uh, it was a series I did uh, about a year and a half ago. And, uh, and these are these are the, the the little studies I did for it. I have uh, further into the the tent. You'll see some of the the bigger finished pieces. Okay. And, uh, they were. I wanted to show my. I, I wanted to show the the power of nature and how big it was compared to the compared to man-made objects. And you'll see that as we go further along. And you'll you'll see that as a theme that that occurs over and over. You'll always see little bits of man-made objects within the nature. Okay. Um, what you're coming to next is uh, you have some of my garden scenes uh, with some of my animals in it. Uh, these are the peacocks that live in Coconut Grove. They've been making the news a lot lately because they're very loud. Um, you have uh, next over is the, some bromeliads that I really like. They were in the Miami Beach Botanical Gardens. Down below that are, I call that the lover's quarrel. Those are a couple little guys who live in my avocado tree. And uh, next to that, I was out in uh, I was in California last year, and that's a Japanese tea garden in San Francisco. Okay, what's your favorite piece in the whole tent? My favorite piece in the whole tent is probably I guess it would be this one. I, I like these both about the same. Okay, and uh, tell us about your website. I'm at www.dambondroff.com. Hello there, how are you? Fine, thank you. Tell us your name. I'm Sandra Miller. Okay, and you're the artist here? I am the artist. Now tell us something about the technique that you use. It's an unusual well, term. I'm a watercolor artist. Right. And I reproduce in gicle format. Okay, and, and tell us what that, form, what that it's involves. It's basically the, the latest, greatest um, processing of, uh, it's archival ink and it's sprayed. Gicle means to spray. If you look it up, it's a French word meaning to spray. So the ink is sprayed onto, whether it be canvas or watercolor paper or whatever media you have. And what type of instrument do you use for the spraying? Oh, I don't do it myself. Oh, I see. This is done by a professional printer. My right. Is, uh, I paint it. I send him my originals, and right. then uh, he reproduces it for me. All right. Now, I'm from Queens, New York. Uh, yeah. Got anything here that might make me a little homesick for Long Island? Maybe right here behind me. Oh, how about that? <laughs> Quelle coincidence. And, and, and where was this one taken? That was uh, jo not Jones Beach. That was um, Fire Island. Fire Island. But I, the lighthouse is different. I wanted it to match my picture. Yeah, the lighthouse, of course, anywhere. in Fire Island yeah, is black and right. white. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want that. <coughs> Great. There. I wanted to keep the earth tones in there. So. Now we'll finish up with this one over here, which is a favorite that's, of mine. Come, come a little closer, please. That's my favorite. Yes. Come right over here so that you can point out. Okay. Tell us about this one. This was a gentleman that was sitting out in front of his home right. when I was walking through um, Santorini. Where is that? In Greece. Oh, in Greece. Yes, okay. Santorini, Greece, one of the islands, Greek Isles. Right, right, right. right. So he sat there for quite some time, and every time I passed him, he was sitting there, so I just took his picture, and here he is. Now, do you, do you have a website where people are more interested, they can get in touch with you? I do. And tell us what the address might be. It is www.sandmillfineart.com. Sandmillfineart.com. Okay. Thanks very much, and best of luck. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We're looking at a rather unusual surrealistic piano keyboard, and uh, if we go on a profile, we see that it's very three-dimensional, and we happen to have the artist standing right here. And hi, what's your name? Hi there, I'm Renee King. Okay, Renee, and uh, tell us about this piano piece that you did. Oh, this is called Red Hot Ivories. And uh, it's a new technique that I've been working with, and I use a type of paper that I gesso into the canvas and then paint with the acrylics on top. 
and then okay. put a nice coating on it. And, All right. and then tell us about this landscape right over here. Uh, this is called Autumn Trio. It's one of my newer pieces. I just finished it two weeks ago. Okay. And, uh, you know, to remind me of the fall and what we miss here in Florida. And this also uses that... <laughs> also this, uses the paper, yes. Do you, do you have any particular name for this? It's called Autumn Trio. No, I mean the technique. Oh, again. the technique... Uh, like bar relief? Or, uh, uh, no, I haven't, I haven't come up with a name. Right. Do you work in any other styles? I do. I do work in other styles. I, uh, I kind of paint impressionistic with oils, and I like to do animals and fruits. All right, let's start over here on the left. Now, you have a bird? It's, a, it's, a, it's a, a love bird. The name of the painting is Enjoying the View. Right. Are they indigenous to Florida? I believe so. I actually think they're, they're Floridian species. Most of the, the plants and animals that I paint are all from Florida. The money answer would have been love is everywhere. Love is, oh, okay. <laughs> I'll have to practice for next time. All right. How uh, about this one? This is a native fruit of Florida. Okay. <laughs> simply a still life of oranges in a bowl. Okay. And it's waiting for somebody's kitchen wall. Right. <laughs> and, then, and then we have the ever-loving manatee. All right. The name of this painting is Lone Sea Cow. Right. They were also known as mermaids and a few other things. But, uh, yeah, nice impression next to style. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Well, thanks very much. How about a website? Do you, can you, if people want to see your, more of your work, where can they go? They can go to Renee hold, the, hold the card up next to your face. They can go to ReneeKing.net. All right. Let's just get a close-up of that. There it is, ReneeKing.net. I love it. So I know how to get a hold of her. This is a very unusual uh, uh, work of art, and uh, we're fortunate enough to have the artist here. And what's your name? Amanda Herring. Right. And tell us about uh, this with the three, oh, I see. three the, panels. The three panels is uh, the background is a wood and uh, the little, the three little pieces are they are in oil and they are in different. Uh, they are uneven. Yes, right. uneven. Yes, right. in three different levels. Okay. And she's my daughter. Saving <laughs> Her face is in one piece, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's what we call surrealism. Exactly. Right. Tell us about this. Uh, that is a ceramic. It's a torso in ceramic. And uh, it's attached to the piece of wood with uh, fish bones. Now, how do you actually form it? Do you using uh, uh, a model? Uh, I, I have one basic mold uh, I make and I and I um, you know, make the mold in different forms, use the mold in different forms. And real quick, let's take a look at this side, some very colorful stuff. Yeah, that is a human too. I, I like the, the, um, the woman bodies and uh, this acrylic, that is acrylic. And I, I work with acrylics and uh, oils what's and going on inks. With, what's going on with this one? Uh, it, that is my daughter too. Right, but I mean, <laughs> what the diagonal that, lines? That, is there any? Uh, is, just, is this rain or no, just? She's in a closet. Just a, uh, an effect. She's in a closet. Oh, I see. So she's a. Uh, uh, that's hanging clothes. Uh, yes, uh, all is there. There are it. clothes around the shoes. Well, you I know. Shoes. Yeah, right, yeah. Right, right, right. All right. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a website where we can see more of your work? Yes, yes, I have a Let me swing around over here for the lighting. Okay, here, hold that up. Okay, okay, so. www.amandaherring.com. Right. Amanda. Beautiful. Okay, Amanda, thanks so much okay. and good luck. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. And here we are at probably what must be the biggest uh, exhibition at our art festival today. And we're talking to the artist, Frederick Prescott. How are you, Fred? Great. How are you today? All right. Give us a little uh, walking tour around the corner and point out how... Uh, well, this is the raven tree. And these are like steel and stainless steel. And any time the wind blows, the ravens crow. So there's no electricity or... No, magic. these are green sculptures. Green sculptures. You know, they don't, work, they don't run on electric motors. In other words, this, this entire, this big moose here, uh -huh. uh, these antlers would be like sails, right. like on a boat. Sure. And any time the wind blows, it gets it going, and then the counterweight brings it back. Right. And so it 
if there's wind, it's always moving. Uh huh. So, and this is uh, this is Mafasa, the big, uh, the biggest lion on the block. This would be bigger, the biggest lion in the world, because this is a little bit bigger than life size. Now, now what causes the glitter effect on it? Well, this is done in a powder coat, right? And it's it has three or four coats of powder, and you bake it at 400 degrees. Right. Then you have a clear coat on it, right. and the clear coat goes on it, and then that bakes at 400 degrees. And inside the clear coat is like a diamond dust. I call it diamond dust. And it actually shimmers in the sun. Here we are, going right through the mouth of the alligator. And the alligator has the diamond dust on it, too. And that actually protects it from the sun. It has UV rays and it knocks the UV right. V rays out so this, this so that it won't fade. This is a baby elephant, and the baby elephant has four coats of powder, and the ears act as big sails. You know, the animal kind of comes to life. This is uh, this is the biggest cock in uh, Delray Beach. This is the mother of all elephants. Wow! Look at this. This is a free-range elephant. This would actually be the real size of a real elephant. Wow. This would be like a female elephant. Uh -huh. Now, if this was a male elephant, it would be three feet higher. Okay. This is a grazing horse. This would be like a mare. Okay. And she's out there in the fields just having lunch. All right, now what about a website if people want to... Uh, website? It's right here. Hold that up. It's prescottstudio at gmail.com. That's uh, the email. Right. And then you've got the website. Prescottstudio.com. Got it. Right. Well, thanks a lot, Fred. And your stuff is marvelous. And uh, I wish you best of luck. Every home should have four or five of these. Absolutely. Of a car. Absolutely. A car in every driveway. Right. Look at them. They're all just moving. Oh, Woo. we'll just end up with a zoom in onto the, uh, looks like a crow. Yes. And we're pulling back on our really colorful landscape. And we're in the booth with a gentleman that purports to be the painter of curved space, as his plaque says on top of the tent. And what's your name? Mick Brandenburger. Mick Brandenburger. Right. And what does this mean? Is it all space? Is it all space curved? Well, according to Einstein, it would be, or right. some Heideggerian thought it might be as well. Right. But that's really not that complicated. What I'm really trying to do is to take the experience of being in a place, expand the vision. Normally, that vision is expressed by artists using straight lines in straight linear perspective. But like curvilinear perspective, uh, fisheye lenses, that kind of idea of vision, you expand your peripheral vision. All right, how about you give us a, an illustrative example of right, one of the right, works? Here's one over here. One that's dramatic. All right, this one is Moon River. Okay. If you ignore the center part and look only at this part down here, right. you will notice we are floating above the, the waterfall looking straight down at it. Okay. You'll notice we're looking straight down at the tree. Mm -hmm. We are literally straight down looking at it floating bird's above. Bird's eye view. Bird's eye view above the scene. If you look higher up here, Below the tree level. We are below looking straight up at the moon, as if we're looking through the trees into that moonlit sky. Now, I seem to detect the works of M.C. Escher in here. Really? Very perspective? Very, very perspective. Uh, M.C. Escher, in his work, um, High and Low, yeah, show us. Come on, High and yeah, Low, right. use this idea. Now, he uses a very rational sense. Right. Mine's very intuitive and almost a romantic sense of curved space. Okay. But his is very rational, very purposeful, mathematical. Right. But I learned a lot from him. Walk us through this one. All right, this one. Notice, we're looking at this road. Right. But as you're looking at this load, you're looking almost back over your shoulder, back in this direction. Sure. Now, Normally, you can't do that unless you expand your peripheral vision. Or you're a giraffe. <laughs> or you're a giraffe. Eyes on either side Or a chicken they see you yeah. on. Yeah, right, exactly. Right, right. So what I'm doing here is I'm using an intuitive sense of spatial composition okay. in which you can see all around. Right. In other words, up, down, right. left, and right. right. 
right. and the purpose is I'm trying to immerse the viewer as if he is there right. in this visionary world, worlds now, I've experienced. Now, are you a child of the 60s? Yes, I am. Uh -huh. yes. And it seems to me that this harkens back onto perhaps some experimentation. Well, actually, I don't do drugs at all, and everybody says, like today, a guy comes and says, what are you, on peyote or something? <laughs> I don't do drugs, but I understand what they're saying. I have many right. friends that did. Yes. Right, right, right. I think you'll sell more paintings today if you say you do. Ah, uh, yes. No. <laughs> now, finally, let's look at this magnificent landscape. Give me a yes. Space. This, the title of this one is Hogback Trail. Uh, what state are we in? Is this New Mexico or actually, Utah? it's Utah. Ah, yeah, but Bryce it's a Canyon, yes, Canyon. Bryce Canyon to the left, right. which right. obviously is clear. Sure. Well, you were there. All right, fantastic. We, yeah, we were there, obviously. Over here is another, is a Route 12 in Utah. Okay. But what happened is, the name of the title, remember, is Hogback Trail. A Hogback Trail is when you get to a ridge of a mountain. Let's say you're traveling a ridge of a mountain here. You have nothing to the left or to the right. You are at the very peak and you're traveling along that ridge. Now, the elevation here was somewhere near 8,000 feet sure. above sea level. The drop off to the left and to the right is very frightening. Right. Now, we also, drove up there by accident and had no choice to cross we have over. A, a temporal schism in this painting. It seems to be day on the left. Oh, yes. And as we move toward the right. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Tell us about that. Well, you see, for me, space and time are intimately con connected. Right. And being a visionary world, I'm visualizing sort of a global experience of things. Right. Um, so I'm not trying just to think about space. Right. by itself, but I'm thinking about the relationship of space and time. Right. Same know. one with the top top one here. I see the moon. Yes, indeed. And of course. Ice and then we move over and it could be high noon on the left. Exactly. All right, Mick, have you got a website? Yes, I do. It's right here. Let's take a it's look. It's yeah. right. Fine Art dot com. Okay, got it. All right, thanks very much. And your stuff is really inspirational. Thank you very and much. And best Fred. of luck. Okay. And stay off the pipe. I'll try. <laughs> and here's something a little bit different. Almost looks like uh, some kind of a hurricane. And we have a forest uh, scene here. And let's meet the artist. Hi. What's your name? Brandy Renee. Okay. Come over here to this beautiful. Uh, looks like a full scene. And just tell us a little something about it. What kind of technique do you use here? Um, this painting I did with a brush, and um, really it wasn't just so much a fall scene. Um, it was more of a, a deep in the forest scene, to go deeper than fall so that every season was shown in this, in this piece. It's really, really great. Thank you very much. We'll work our way over here. This purple background. What do we got here? This one is out of my Love Tree series. It's called Intertwined Love. Um, I don't know if you can catch it on the camera, but right there it says Intertwined Love. It's carved into it. Absolutely. And uh, this painting is really just about being love and encompassing love with somebody else. Well, that sounds great. I was looking for things that size. All right, let's get to this one over here. Very striking. What do you call this one? Um, this one actually doesn't have a name yet. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's nameless. Right. I just did it. You look like you might have like wild dreams, do you? Sometimes. Okay, I can tell. <laughs> uh, now finally, let's look at this big triptych you got over here. What do you call that? Um, that one doesn't have a name either. Oh, okay. <laughs> it usually t takes me a little bit of time to... Well, it's, name. it's more existential this way. Yeah. This was just supposed to be just... I like to express feelings usually by colors, and this was what I was doing in my PATH series, so I was just really trying to encompass a full, rich fall scene. Right. All right, and finally, we always ask everyone if they have a website. And tell us the name of your website. brenee.com. Okay, thanks a lot. Appreciate it, Brandy. Good luck. And here we are talking with Will Grant. And tell us a little bit about the medium you're working in today. It's acrylic. Right. And we're going to squeeze through these two pieces here. And what do you call this one? That would be an acrylic sailboat. And how do you how do you make these things? Uh, real quick. I paint the different surfaces and fuse them together. Okay. I'd start with uh, four pieces of clear and I fuse them together. Right. You can see all the different dimensions if you go up and down with the camera. Right. It's 
Yeah, different levels. That's Correct. Beautiful. And that's how I do most of my work. And this one's done with a lot of hammer and chiseling mm -hmm. to get that uh, crackle look. Very nice. And then this piece over here? That's about 15 pieces okay. that I paint and fuse together, different layers. As we move down, it becomes becomes apparent that it it's a layering effect. Right. Yeah. Back is all hammer and chisels. Let's just see what happens as we pass around it this way. Oh wow, you get a whole different uh, look to it. And then finally over here, what do you call this piece? That is a prismatic cube. And the obvious question is, how do you get inside the, the thing? And I, I build the sculpture first, and then I cast liquid around it. Okay, and what kind of liquid is that? It's an epoxy. And then, so it's fully hardened at this point? Correct. Right, right, right. All right, well, uh, your stuff is certainly uh, beautiful, and do you have a website? I do. It's willgrantdesigns.com. Okay, and we'll definitely look forward to seeing your more of your stuff. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks very kindly. All right. Bye-bye.